Next is what's known as a uh, super, super, and catastrophic terrorism. Right? Super and catastrophic terrorism. Um, this refers to uh, terrorist acts in WMDs, right? Weapons of mass destruction are used in a terrorist attack or serve as the weapons of intended use, right? So these uh, weapons of mass attack, right? These weapons of mass destruction, however, are used in super or catastrophic terrorist acts, right? So for example, um, the gassing of the Tokyo uh, subways was an act of uh, catastrophic terrorism, right? Because what ends up happening, and also now we know that such an attack, right? Uh, not always, but such an attack, as in the case of the Tokyo subway gassing, um, was not only a catastrophic terrorist attack, but it was a bargaining independent terrorist attack. Why was it bargaining independent? Because in the gassing of the Tokyo subways, there was nothing that negotiators could do, there was nothing that the attackers wanted to, um, to divert the attack. The attack was to cause panic, to cause terror, um, and I've I've written on this in the blogosphere um, in an analysis of um, cult leadership and sort of the, the structural um, component parts of cult leadership, specifically females and cult leaders. Um, so it's important to recognize that um, that particular form of super catastrophic terrorist attack was also a bargaining independent form of terrorism, and that should make sense, though it's very, very technical, it should make sense based on what I said uh, previously. Um, in bargaining dependent terrorist attacks, right? In terrorist attacks wherein the attackers are looking for a bargaining chip, if you will, something that can be bargained, it's important to recognize that there are pros and cons to um, hostage negotiations, right? Um, obviously, hostage negotiations, kidnappings, seizures, hijackings, all of these are bargaining dependent forms of terrorism. Um, and in these bargaining dependent forms of terrorism, um, obviously, there are pros and cons to negotiating with with kidnappers, right? So ho hostage negotiation um, has pros and cons. Obviously, I, I teach this stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very well uh, aware of the various forms um, and various stances of which negotiations can take. So it's important to recognize, just on the general level, I'm not going to get into any complexity here on some of the advantages, right? So the pros and cons of... Uh, Pros and cons of hostage negotiation. So the pros and cons of hostage. Right, pros and cons of hostage negotiation. Let's begin with the cons, right? What are some of the bad parts, right? What are some of the deficits of um, hostage negotiations? Um, uh, Crenshaw on page 18 of the analysis, obviously negotiating with with terrorists confers legitimacy, right? Insofar as a government um, negotiate, is willing to negotiate with terrorists, with hostage takers, then insofar as there is a negotiation, it confers legitimacy, right? And that's problematic, right? You want to stay away from that. So the first problem is that it confers right? It confers legi legitimacy. We don't want um, as an international community or a domestic uh, community, as a state or as um, an international, um, um, as an international group, want to give legitimacy to terrorist organizations, insofar as terrorist hostage takers believe that they can use um, an individual, a group of individual hostages or people that they've hijacked, as a tool for getting what they want from the state, right? Then what ends up happening is that the state becomes, in a sense, its power is diffused to the hostage takers. So really, this idea of conferring legitimacy on a conceptual level is really a discourse on the transference and the dynamic relationship of power, right? Refers, this refers, right, uh, refers to the If this is the state, right, and here's the terrorist organization, 
and the terrorist organization makes a demand for Y. They say they want Y. Right? If the state concedes and gives, gives the terrorist organization Y, the terrorist organization says that they want Y, the state concedes and gives the terrorist organization Y, what ends up happening is that it confers the legitimacy of the terrorist organization. And the question is, well, what do you think will happen next? Well, obviously, what the terrorist organization is going to say is now they want some new thing, Z, right? And on and on and on and on and on. So allowing its what's known as a slippery slope, in allowing one instance of, um, of conference, right? In allowing one instance of conference wherein the state secedes, and, not secedes, well, sorry, wherein the state um, succumbs and allows the terrorist organization to get their demand, what it does is it emboldens the terrorist organization to make new demands, right? And then obviously what ends up happening is, this is sort of like um, blackmail on an individual, le uh, individual level, right? If the blackmailer tells the person who's being blackmailed, I want X, and that person gives the blackmailer X in order to pacify the blackmailer, the blackmailer's thinking to him or herself, wow, uh, this is what happened in the, in the Dave Letterman extortion case, right? Wow, um, now that I know I got Dave Letterman to give up what I wanted, let me go back and extort him again, right? So um, you don't want to confer legitimacy to the terrorist group because insofar as you've conferred legitimacy, you embolden the organization to repeat the attack uh, against the state, right? And then obviously the demands, the second demand is going to be bigger uh, and more audacious than the first. So the first problem in um, hostage negotiation is that it confers legitimacy. The second problem in hostage negotiation is that um, negotiations and concessions make a government vulnerable to future attacks, right, and future demands, which is what I said, right? So it makes, it makes the government vulnerable. It makes the government vulnerable to future attacks and also future demands. First, the terrorist organization demanded Y. Now the organization is demanding X and Z and so on, right? Increasingly, the organization is going to gain power from the satisfaction of its demands, right? Having its demands met. And because its demands are met, it will obviously escalate the, uh, the threats in order to gain more of what it wants. So the, the, the way around this is to not negotiate, right? And almost universally, um, for the most part, it's the case that states do not, under any circumstance, negotiate with terrorist organizations, knowing full well that the refusal to negotiate with terrorist organizations will, will typically result in the, the deaths of whoever is being held as um, bargaining dependent chips, right? The chips, quote unquote, being people, it being bargaining dependent because the organization is allowing the state to satisfy some means. So that when we're talking about, obviously, hostage negotiation, all forms of hostage negotiation are bargaining dependent. Um, you cannot have a, host a form of hostage negotiation which is bargaining independent because of um, the confliction in definitional and con uh, conceptual, um, conceptual meaning. All right.